children and welcome to Sunday School class. Mrs. Watkins is at the piano. This is your first song for today. This is going to stand up and wake up. If you know the clapping on this, you can do it. I can't clap. I'm holding a sign. Here we go. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I think we better do this again. Here we go. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is a day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. second time. At this time, Mrs. Watkins is coming, the flannel graph queen, the Bible story lady, and she is going to teach you a lesson from God's Word right now. Okay, good morning, kids. It probably You did probably do a good job because I remember when you were in Sunday school with me that you liked that song and we sang it very well. So good morning, and I'm glad you're tuned in this morning. Be sure you have your Bible and your paper and a pencil so that you can be writing the answers if you want to ahead of time. Before we begin, we're going to start with prayer. Here we go, close your eyes, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time and I thank you for each one of our children from our church and others that are watching. I pray, Lord, that you'd speak to their hearts as we learn about something that's very important today, about the calming of our hearts and our lives. We pray that you would help us to understand and use it this week in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to turn <clears throat> in our Bibles to the book of Mark. <clears throat> We've been in the book of Mark most of the time in our lessons. And today we're going to be talking about how Jesus calms the storm. And we're going to look at Mark chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 35 and read to the half point of verse 38. Here we go. And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. That means that he was on the water and some others were next to him. And there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And we're leaving it there. So have you ever run into a wall and said, what are you doing there, you dumb thing? Why are you there? I'm sure the wall did not answer you. Or maybe you drop a pencil and you say, where in the world is that pencil? Oh, there it is. Who are you talking to? You're talking to yourself. The pencil won't get up and walk to you, and the wall won't get out of your way. But we're going to talk about someone today who can talk to everything, and everything obeys him. Why? Because the Bible tells us that he is the creator of everything. Everything you see and have and yourself, he's created everything. And so our miracle today is going to be about that. In our previous lesson, before these, the verse 35, as it tells us, they were up on the mountain. They went from one shore to the other, and the multitudes came, and Jesus was with his disciples, if you remember last week, and they came, and they were with him, and he preached and taught for a very, very long time. And so Jesus was tired. So he said to his disciples, let's go back over to the other side of the lake or of the sea. They called it the Sea of Galilee, but it was really big. It, that's why they called it the sea. 
And so they got in their ship, and as the Bible says, there were other ships around them. But they started over towards the other side. And when they were traveling, and remember, they didn't have a motor on the boat. They had to row or they had a steering, a way of steering it. But they weren't close enough to the shore, and something took place. Well, first of all, we know that Jesus Christ was in the back of the ship. And they headed out, and they knew Jesus was there. They also knew all about his miracles and everything he had done. It's just like you and me. We know all about the Bible. Sometimes most, a lot of us know a lot about the Bible, but we don't really truly believe it. When something happens to us, instead of going to Jesus about it and asking for his help, we think of everything else we can do. And this is what the disciples did. They tried to do everything, but the storm was coming up very, very strong. The waves began to turn into very large waves. And when they were in the boat, the boat, the waves were coming over the boat and into it. And there was a wind that started to blow. And that wind blew and blew on the water. And the water just started getting more waves. I don't know if you've ever been in a boat fishing, but sometimes the water comes up because of the waves and it gets harder and harder to drive or steer that boat. And this is what's happening. And the wind is blowing. And pretty soon they're like, what? We, this has never been like this before on the water. It was a different type of a storm because almost all the disciples were used to being on the sea. They were fishermen, but this was a very, very, very bad storm. Who's in the boat with them? If you said Jesus, you were right. He is in the boat with them, but he is sound asleep and his head's on a pillow. But it isn't for long here. So as we look at verse 38, they say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Perish means die. Don't you care that we're ready to die? The water's coming in. The wind is blowing our sails. It's probably going to tear them apart. This is a very bad storm. Don't you care? And Jesus, can you imagine Jesus waking up and seeing all these men around him looking at him and saying, don't you care? Don't you care? And he's just waking up. Have you ever had someone come in your room and wake you up suddenly and you're like, what is this? What, what's going on? And we see that this is what happened to Jesus. They gave me the wrong stand this morning. So this is the one that does not work for me. Anyways, Jesus looked up in his disciples' faces and they were all scared to death. And so he asked them two questions. And these questions were this. Let's look at our Bible and see what he says. And he arose, he got up, and rebuked the wind, and said unto the sea, Peace, be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Wow. The disciples didn't even realize that the person that was with them was the answer to their problem. And then he says unto them, what are ye, why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? One of the things that happens to us, just like it happened to the disciples is, we have things that happen to us and we forget who is the one who can help us. We're so worried about things. Right now there's a lot of things that keep a lot of people and children troubled at this time. We have a lot of things going on in our life that is not normal. We're afraid of what's going on. We're afraid sometimes when we have to do things we don't understand. Sometimes we're sad. Sometimes we're frightened. And sometimes we just don't have an answer, even as children. But God says, Jesus can help you with that. I can help you with that. He could help the disciples. Jesus was right there with them. But they didn't even think of why they were asking him this. Instead of going to him and saying, Jesus, uh, you want to do a miracle now and we'll get out of this? But no, he said, they said, what are you, don't you care? The interesting thing is Jesus knew all about what was going to happen before the disciples did. Just like you, he knows everything that's going to happen to you and he cares about everything that happens to you. 
So the question is, why were the disciples so fearful? Because they were looking at the storm around them. And it was dangerous. And it was scary. And instead of looking and thinking about Jesus right away, they just started figuring, how are we going to get out of this? This storm we cannot fix. Number two was the question, where was their faith in God? This is sometimes something that we have to really think about. Fear grips our hearts. Things that happen to us make us think there's nobody that cares. In 2 Timothy 1.7 it says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. That means that Jesus does not want you to worry about things or get all upset over things if you know Jesus Christ is your Savior. He has the power to help you through anything that happens in your life. You say, well, I don't think I'm going to go through a storm like that. But you, we have storms in our life. Just like I said, right now, we're going through many, many things, adults and children. And then there's other times when we go through things that happen in our lives. This isn't just the only thing, this virus and worried about food and, and what are we going to do about that. It's not just that that we worry about. There's many, many things that we worry about. And Jesus was in the boat with his disciples. Jesus is with you if you know him as your personal savior. But this is very good because we need this kind of calming that the scripture tells us about in John 14. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And in John 14, 27, it says peace. Now that's a very good uh, thing to have is peace. I leave with you my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. This is the command. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And what are you fearful of? And what do you do when you're fearful? So, I brought a little something. Maybe you have a stuffy, your favorite stuffy. And maybe you go and get your stuffy out and you hold on to that and it makes you feel better. But it's just for a minute. Maybe you have a favorite blanket and you go for your room and you get that blanket and you huddle under it and it gives you peace for a minute. Then some of you actually go to your phones and say, I'm gonna call a friend or I'm gonna play a game and that'll take my mind off of being fearful. Yes, but it is only temporary because then the fear comes back. Because what is the only thing that helps us? Our faith in Jesus Christ. It helps us to be strong and not to be fearful. The storms come into our life in many ways. Right now, it's really very difficult because kids are trying to learn school at home. And parents who don't know anything about it are trying to teach them school. This is a hardship. Now, some of you are homeschooled, but if you are not homeschooled and you've been going to public school, this is a very hard thing. And we have a really good verse in Psalm <clears throat> chapter 48. Verse 14. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. That means God is with us as long as we're alive. Because you see, Jesus Christ walked on this earth. He died. He rose again. And now that same Jesus that calmed the storm is up in heaven. And he sits at the right hand of God, his Father. And the angels are his messengers. You see, we believe in a God that's alive. We believe in Jesus Christ who lives even today. And he can live in your heart and he can live in heaven because he's God. God is the creator of all. He created us. He knows everything about us. When you are afraid or you're scared or you're just having a lot of trouble, think, who can I go to? Jesus Christ. He will be our guide unto our death. Friends may turn on you and disappoint you, but God never does. He is only good all the time. People say, why do bad things happen to me? 
What is God doing? It's not God. God is good all the time. He says in Hebrews 13, 50, For he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. That means he never will. You might be with a parent that says, I love you and I care about you, but perhaps in about six or seven months that parent is gone. They've left you or they've left the home or perhaps someone has passed away in your home. Then you don't have that person or those people. But Jesus, you would always have because he said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And forsake means forget about you or let you down. When you pray to me, I will answer you. Hard times come to all of us. And right now, it's a very hard time, as I've said before. But Jesus is with us, and he knows all that's going on. And he is doing this, allowing this for his own good, because we're all going to learn something through this. The song that we sang this morning, I will enter his courts with praise. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. That's talking about going to church. And you say, Mrs. Watkins, you're the only one and pastor in this church, in the church. This is the building. We, the people, are the church. So right where you are, you're having church. With your brother, sister, mom and dad, whoever it may be, you have a little church there because we are the church of Jesus Christ because he lives within us. This morning, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you just a little few thoughts here. As I said, Jesus Christ died on the cross and his sin, our sin was put on him and his blood covered it all. The sins of everyone in the world were covered at that time, past, present, and future. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man or boy or girl comes to Christ unless comes to the, the Father except by me. That means God the Father is in heaven and Jesus died and he is also in heaven because he rose. And through Jesus' power on the cross and his authority, he tells us, if you will trust in me, if you will put your faith in me, I will save you and give you a place in heaven. The Bible is a true book and everything that's in it are promises and truth. God has never lied. Jesus will never let you down. The thing is that we have to have faith in Jesus Christ. Even children that have received Christ forget. We don't have to worry. We, we just need to pray. If you can't pray and you're very upset, you can cry to God. God hears children. And I've said before in my lesson times, Jesus loves the children, all of the children. And he died for each and every one of you. And he wants to give you a place in heaven. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, now is the time to come. Now is the time that you need him. Put your faith in him. Trust him. He's there. And Jesus said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We simply ask Jesus to come into my life and forgive me of my sin. I had some fearful times growing up myself. My dad was a fisherman, which reminds me of this story. And he would go out, we had a little boat, and it just had a little motor on it, and it was quite small, but we would go out onto the ocean. And uh, most of the time, my dad was very careful, and we didn't go out when it was rough, my brother and myself. But this one day, we did, and it was very rough out there. And as we were going out, big boats were coming in and saying, you're, you're just, that boat's not going to make it. You're just too small. That's just too small of a boat. You're going to get pulled under. There's waves out there that are very high and it's starting to, the wind is starting to blow hard. And my dad said, we'll be all right. We're just going out here a little ways. And so we went further than a little ways, I think. And so I, I started to think, my brother and I looked at each other and we said, we're probably going to die. And my dad heard us and he said, we're not going to die. We're going out to get fish and then we're coming back in. But we didn't because when we got out to where we were to fish, the waves were very much higher than the size of our boat. And so I began to pray and think, I've got to, we got to have help. We got to have help. So my brother and I were praying, but my dad said, what are you doing? You need to take the, the coffee cans and start bailing the water out. 
And so we started bailing the water out of the boat. And I have, I'm here to tell you, as you know, I'm living, I, we made it through that, but there were big boats that came alongside of us and said, you're probably not gonna make it. You gotta bail faster than that. And they actually came with us into, back into the dock because they were afraid our boat was gonna go under. But Jesus was with us. And so what we thought was going to be a bad time turned out to be fine because Jesus took care of us. That's what he does for you. And he can do it for all of us. And we thank him for that when he helps us because he's the only one that can help us through these hard, hard times. But Jesus is alive and he cares. Okay, so if you have your paper, and I know some of you learned your verse this week, which was very good. And we're going to turn to the questions. And the first question is, how did Jesus calm the storm? Well, as I tell many of the children when I tell this story is, Jesus only needs to use his words. Have you ever had someone to say to you, well, just use your words. I've said that to my children in school before. But peace, be still. And think of it, everything calmed down. He just needed to say the words. And we just need to say the words, Jesus, help me. Come be with me. I'm afraid. What two questions did Jesus ask the disciples after calming the storm? One was, why are you so fearful? And the other is, where's your faith? And if you put anything like that, you're correct. Number three, what does the word power in Matthew 28, 18 refer to? The verse is about all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. What is power? Well, we think of power. I'd like to be a powerful person. I'd like to have power to be able to, to do something like climb a mountain or whatever. But Jesus is saying this because his power means authority. That means he created everything. He owns everything. They will all obey him. He had that kind of authority. He had the authority to calm the storm. Jesus was asleep. This is kind of an interesting thing. Jesus was asleep when the wind and the rain was howling. It did not wake him. But as soon as the voices of the disciples he heard, it did wake him. The thing is, the storm did not bother Jesus because he had authority over it. And, but when he heard his disciples pleading for help, it caused him to think and wake up. And if the voices of his friends, his disciples, made him wake up and he did because he wanted to help them he knew all that was happening but he wanted them to come to him he wants you to call on him when you need help king david wrote this when he was in trouble in psalms 116:2, because he hath inclined his ear unto me therefore will i call upon him as long as i live pray to god wherever you are in good times and bad times. Our verse for today is Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. This is your verse for next week. Thank you for watching today, and I pray that you have a wonderful week this week. Bye.